Okay, we're going to pick up with our discussion of coterminal angles by evaluating a few of these trig functions at these angles that are clearly not on the unit circle. And if you remember what coterminal angles are, those are angles which basically look like spirals. They have, uh, they go around the unit circle more than once in either direction, but they end up at the same place. So visually, here's what I'm saying. Let's say I have an angle that goes around like this, okay? That is negative four pi because it went around the unit circle twice in the opposite direction from what we usually measure. Now, what's that equivalent to? Well, I could draw another angle here, which only goes around the unit circle once. That's negative two pi. And these are equivalent angles as far as the unit circle is concerned because they share the same terminal side right here, that terminal side that I'm drawing. So when you're looking for coterminal angles, here's what we want. We want theta greater than or equal to zero, but less than 360 degrees. Or if you're in radians, that's greater than equal to zero, but less than two pi. So the question is, let's start with tangent of negative four pi, since I already kind of drew that picture. Negative four pi, we want it to be on the unit circle, so I'm gonna add two pi. I'm gonna to try to unwind that spiral. And I get negative two pi. Still not on the unit circle yet, so I add another two pi. And I get zero. That is on the unit circle, zero radians. So I'm gonna say tangent of negative four pi equals tangent of zero pi. Okay, they are coterminal angles. And tangent of zero pi is just zero, so we have our answer right there. Okay, so that was a kind of simple example. Let's do another one. I'm gonna stick with radians for the time being. Okay, let's see, how about, um, what looks good? Well, I just did a negative angle, so let's do a positive angle. Cosine of seven pi over three. And my first question to you is seven pi over three on the unit circle. To figure that out, what's seven over three? Well, if, if you don't remember your decimals, you can do it on a calculator, but this is equal to 2.1333, no, 2.3333. So clearly that's more than two pi, right? Seven pi over three is gonna be 2.33 pi. That's more than two pi, so I know it's not on the unit circle, and it's too big, it's too far positive. So what I'm gonna do is say seven pi over three minus two pi. I want to unwind that positive spiral and bring it back down to values on the unit circle. But if you remember common denominators, I don't use two pi, right? I'm going to use six pi over three. Now seven pi over three minus six pi over three leaves one pi over three. And what that is saying is the cosine of seven pi over three equals the cosine of one pi over three. And if you remember your unit circle, these are very good values to memorize. That is equal to one half. Okay, that's in the first quadrant. It's kind of like 60 degrees and the cosine value there, the x-coordinate is one half. Okay, so let's try one in degrees now. And I'm gonna hop over to this one because that is, I mean, it's not only a negative value, which sometimes confuses people, but it's also a secant value. And reciprocal trig functions require just a little bit more thinking about this. So we're gonna start the same way. I'm gonna say, negative 810 degrees, obviously not on the unit circle, right? So I'm going to add 360. I'm going to add a spiral and see if that helps me out. So let's see, calculator time, negative 810 plus 360 is negative 450 degrees. Still not on the unit circle, so I'm gonna add another spiral. And that gives me uh, negative 90 degrees. Still not on the unit circle, so let's add another spiral. Plus 360. And that gives me 270 degrees. Okay, so visually, just a reminder, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, uh, let's see, negative, negative 810, huh? Let's see, uh, 360, that's 720, so this looks like, there we go. That's negative 810 degrees. And what I just found out is that by unwinding the spiral, I can draw another angle right here, 270 degrees, which is coterminal with negative 810 degrees at the negative portion of the y-axis, right there. There's my terminal side. So, now I know something useful. I can say the secant of negative 810 degrees equals the secant of 270 degrees. Okay, step one done. 
so what is the secant of 270 degrees? Well, I know that secant of theta equals 1 over cosine of theta. And you should too. This is a reciprocal trigonometry, trigonometric identity. Okay, secant is just 1 over cosine, which means secant of 270 degrees equals 1 over cosine of 270 degrees. So you see now it's actually useful for us to know all those sine and cosine values from the unit circle, even though this is a secant problem. It's gonna, that's what's required now. So if you think about your unit circle, 270 degrees is going straight down, right? So what coordinate, let's say this is our unit circle right here, okay? There's my unit circle, kind of sloppy. But what would the coordinate value be when you're going straight down on the unit circle? Well, if you remember, that's 0, comma, negative 1. Okay, you go down 1 in y, and x doesn't really move. What that means, since cosine is the x value, that means this is 1 divided by 0. And 1 divided by 0, you could write infinity, you could write DNE, right? It would accept either answer. Infinity, DNE, it would even accept negative infinity if you wanted. They're all undefined. So that's how you deal with these coterminal angles. You unwind the spirals, either positive or negative. If there's reciprocals, you deal with those. And then you kind of step your way towards the answer.